Hello, and welcome to another webinar presented by Xamarin University. In this webinar, we'll talk about building your first Android app using Xamarin and Visual Studio. My name is Judy McNeil, and I'm an instructor here at Xamarin University. I invite you to ask questions via the chat window anytime during the webinar. We have Xamarin experts waiting to answer your questions. You may be wondering, what is Xamarin University? Well, Xamarin University is the place to go for the most comprehensive and up-to-date Xamarin-focused training. We have live classes with expert instructors, one-on-one -on -one office hours to work individually with an instructor on your specific goals, an amazing Xamarin community with a private forum just for Xamarin University students and instructors and an opportunity to become a Xamarin Certified Mobile Developer, which is quickly becoming a benchmark certification. If you'd like to learn more or enroll in XAMU, visit university.xamarin.com. Our main goal for today is to build and run a Xamarin Android app, but let's take a step back from that and start with an overview of the process. Microsoft offers end-to-end -to -end tools for developers to create and publish mobile applications. The Xamarin Development Platform lets you build native Android, iOS, Mac, and Windows applications all in C Sharp. There is unit testing and UI testing, and with our test cloud, you can run your automated UI test on hundreds upon hundreds of physical devices with various operating systems and form factors without having to own and maintain all of your own physical devices. There's also our build tools to help you build native applications while still being able to write everything in C-sharp, the language that we all know and love. And with Hockey App, you can quickly deploy beta versions of your application to your testers to ensure that your app is amazing before it actually releases out to the public. Once your application is published, we have tools to monitor usage and track custom events and receive crash reports. Now today, we're going to focus on creating and running a mobile app. We'll look at building your UI, adding behavior, and then running the app on both an emulator and a physical device. Now, let's look a little deeper at the Xamarin approach. With Xamarin, you write a unique UI for each platform that you want to support, but you share your core business logic. That means typically 70 to 85% of your code is being shared. Now keep in mind all of the code that you're writing is done in C Sharp. You even have access to the .NET libraries that make coding in C Sharp so much fun. Things like async and await, link, delegates, tasks, and there's a comprehensive runtime that gives you all of the great .NET features you're used to including the common .NET types and garbage collection. So the magic of Xamarin is that you get 100% native API access, so nothing is limited. Anything you can do in the native tools and libraries, you can do using C Sharp and .NET, and still get a high performance native application. On Android, Xamarin leverages just-in-time compilation, just like a Java Android application, to create an optimized executable on the executing device. So let's look at this a little closer. Native Android apps run on the Linux kernel. That gives you access to the hardware. Android Runtime, or ART, does things like garbage collection and memory management and such, on the Java side. The Xamarin Android libraries are C Sharp wrappers around the underlying Java and Android packages. 
These are native and they're not written in C-sharp, so they have to run on art. The mono runtime is part of your app's process to execute your intermediate language code, and that includes the code that you wrote in C-sharp. This means that the mono runtime and art run side by side in your app's process. Now, looking at that 100% API coverage, first, as you can see, we get a lot of the wonderful .NET libraries that we know and love, as well as libraries specific to Android, text-to-speech, toolbars, and others. So again, anything you can do in Java on Android, you can do in C Sharp. Xamarin has a long history of making very timely updates when new versions or products launch. For Xamarin Android, we track the available betas from Google and are generally able to release our SDKs within a few weeks of the launch of a new Android version. So you can take advantage of new features almost immediately. And today we're going to focus on handheld mobile devices, specifically phones and tablets. But keep in mind, Xamarin fully supports other Android devices. You can create apps for Android Wear and Amazon Fire TV as well. And one last thing I want to share with you before we jump into the code. Xamarin is now also completely open source. And because it's open source, you can download the source code, poke around in it a little bit to see how things work, and you could even add features to extend the platform. And if you want to contribute, Xamarin takes pull requests. So let's see how to create and run a Xamarin Android application. You have two IDE choices available. For Windows users, we include a free community edition. And if you use Visual Studio 2015 or 2017, you can install Xamarin right from the Visual Studio installer. For Mac users, you can use Xamarin Studio or Visual Studio for Mac, which is currently in, in preview. Visual Studio and the Xamarin tools give you everything that you need to create and run an application. With Xamarin installed, Visual Studio will have project templates for Xamarin iOS, Xamarin Android, and Xamarin Forms. Visual Studio includes design tools to help you create your UI, and this includes a full-featured designer for Android. And then once your application is ready, you can run it on Visual Studio Android emulator or a physical device. So now that we have our IDE set up and ready to go, let's look at the structure of a Xamarin Android application. The basic building block of an Android application is an activity. An activity groups together the UI and the code that's needed for the user to interact with your app. I like to think of an activity as analogous to a page or a screen in an app. An activity is defined in two files. We have an XML layout file for the UI and a C-sharp code file that implements the behavior. Your activity class needs to inherit from Android's activity base class. You also have to add the activity attribute to your activity class. The activity attribute has several properties that affect how Android treats your activity. So let's take a look at this. So the very first place we start, of course, is File New. File New Project. 
And under Visual C Sharp, we have an Android tab. In that Android tab, we have some templates to start with, with an Android project. A blank app is a project for creating a Xamarin Android application. Start at the beginning. There's also Android Wear app, a WebView app, an OpenGL for games, uh, an Android class library, a single view app, that one has a little bit of code in it already, a bindings library for Android, a UI test for Xamarin UI test, and a unit test app as well. I've already got a single view app open. Now remember we said that the basic building blocks of an Android application is an activity. And the activity is in two different files. So I'd like to start there before we ex explore more of the template. Inside of your resources folder, there is a layout folder. And inside of it comes with a main.axml. It's just one single screen. Here it opens in the designer. In this case, I've got a button on it already. It says, hello world, click me. This screen, I can use the designer or I can hit the source down here and get to the XML itself and edit the XML. The other half of that, of course, is mainactivity.cs. Notice that we inherit from activity. We have our activity attribute. And in this case, we have a special property in this attribute called main launcher, and we've set that to true. This means that this is the starting point of your application. So when the user taps on your icon, this is the screen that will open. Now, if you're used to UWP, you know that the, the UI and the code behind are partial classes. So they're, they know of each other naturally. Not the case in Android. We have to tell the code behind what its, I, its UI is. And we do that down here with set content view. That's the first thing that we do. And we're going to pass it in resource.layout.main. And at first you would think, oh, well, look at that, resource layout main in our folders. But if you mouse over it, you'll notice main is an integer. What we're passing in is an integer field. What happens there, if you look at resource.designer.cs, this is generated code. So obviously you won't be putting any of your code in here. But you'll notice there is a class resource. And a little while down here, there is a class layout. And this main is an integer. And it was created for you as part of the designer generated code. We'll come back to this a little more later. So back in our main activity, we pass in that integer. There's a lot of things in Android that require this kind of integer. Like I said, we'll do more of that later. So now that we have that all wired up, um, I want to go into a little bit about the rest of the template. One of the things I want to point out is the references folder. Notice that you have .NET, right? System, system.core, system.xml, all that good stuff. We also have mono.android. This is the magic, right? This is where the good stuff happens. This is what lets us create things in C Sharp and still get a native Android application. If you go down a little bit farther, there's an assets folder. This is for read-only assets that you'd like to include with your project. There's an about here that's really very helpful. They've got a text file or, or some fonts that you can use. And the nice thing about this assets folder is that Android gives us convenient methods to access things here. There's, of course, your resources folder. In your drawable, it's where you put your icons of different sizes and resolutions. You have your layout folder. That's where we had our layouts or our screen designs. We also have a values folder that has a strings.xml in it. This is 
a, a place to keep some hard-coded stuff that you want to work with in your UI. Notice that the, the title of our button is here. All right, so now that we've kind of looked at what we've got and we know how it comes together, let's run it on an emulator. All right, so we've got it running. Hello world, click me, and it actually kind of works. All right, a couple of clicks there. The important part is that we did this all in C-sharp, and we get a native Android application. So let's explore a little further. Now, let's look at sharing code and using those amazing features of C-sharp. As we said before, one of the cool things about using Xamarin is that we can share code between our platform projects. Usually we do this in the form of a portable class library. As you can see here, there are profiles for portable class libraries that include Xamarin. Xamarin Android also lets you leverage Java libraries through a technique called binding. So if you've got some Java libraries you'd like to use in your Xamarin application, you absolutely can. All the views and layouts that you work with in your UI inherit from the view class. So they all have an ID property. In XML, you use the Android ID attribute to set the underlying ID property. You use the special syntax at plus ID to set the Android ID. That tells Android that you want it to generate a new ID for you. The string after the forward slash is used as the name of a generated field. The field has type int and Android takes care of assigning a unique integer value to it. The integer value of the field is what really gets assigned to the view ID property. The activity has a find view by ID method that takes an integer ID and it searches the activity's UI for a view with that ID value. You pass it one of the resource ID fields and it returns a reference to that view. Once you have a reference then, you can work with the view. So for example, you could access the text property to retrieve user input from an edit text or to subscribe to a click event of a button. So let's talk about this process and add some c -sharp code. I've got a different project to open. That has a little bit more to it. Give us a little bit more fun. This is a simple weather app. You enter a city, you press the button to get the weather. We'll have a temperature here and the condition here. But the interesting thing about this app is if you look over in the Solution Explorer, I have an Android weather app. It looks just like the Android app we just finished. Right? I have my assets folder, resources. I have my layout, my main activity. It's all the same. However, I have a portable class library that's going to, sh to hold all of my code that isn't Android specific, which is a good portion of my code, all my business logic. In our case, it holds our weather service and my weather view model. And this is handy because I could, if I wanted to, add a UWP project to this and still share all of this code, this portable class library code. I could add, uh, add an iOS project, still the same thing. And I don't have to write that code over and over again. We can all share the same portable class library. So let's explore that a little further. We have a weather service here, 
And as you can see, it's just C sharp. I have uh, async task. I have HTTP client. I have JSON I'm deserializing. Same thing, nothing magical there. I have a view model that I can use, and I can use this with any of my UIs. Like I said, I could add a UWP project. I could add an iOS project if I wanted. And it gets a weather service, and then it populates some properties for me. And you'll notice it's just C Sharp and maybe some of the cooler, newer C Sharp as well. And then in my main, where I was before, I have the designer I can use. We'll get to that in just a little bit. There's some source, so I can go through my XML and see it. One thing I want to point out, I have a get weather button. And I also have, down here at the bottom, a temperature text and a weather text. So if I go into my designer under ID, you'll notice I have a get weather button, a temperature text, and a weather text. Now I can use those. So let's go into my main activity. I want to get a hold of my button to sign up for its clicked event. So let's get a hold of the button first. We'll just call the button Get Weather. And once again, I have to use the Find View by ID. We'll tell it what we're looking for. We're looking for a button. And then where to find it. Resource. dot id dot and we called it get weather button so there it is now that we have a reference to our button I'm going to sign up for its click event so I just say get weather dot click And I sign up plus equals just as I would before. But I don't want to get weather underscore click. I've already got an on get weather clicked down here. So I'm just going to type that. Now we've signed up. Down here in our on get weather clicked, we're going to get a new weather view model. I'm going to set up a nice little animation. That's a little twirly so that because we're doing all this asynchronously. So I want to have something going on in the UI there. And if we have data available, then I want to set the temperature and the condition. I've already done a find view by ID for temperature text and weather text. So I can just set those. Setting the text property. To, now from my weather view model I have temperature. Same with weather text dot text. From my weather view model I have condition. Okay, so those two things should be filled out when I run it now. Let's go ahead and run this in the emulator for now. All right, so let's enter a city. We'll say Seattle. And we'll get the weather. And there we go. We have 36 degrees and broken clouds. 
point is we've shared code we've done C sharp that we're all used to nothing new there now as we just saw that works but it's not real pretty so I want to talk about the designer a little bit and then we're going to add a little bit more to the UI, give it some oomph. Each mobile platform provides a rich selection of native controls. It's the native controls that are actually presenting our UI. These include standard things like buttons and text blocks, along with some specialized controls that are unique to Android. And a lot of times it's these specialized controls that really help make an app stand out, feel more integrated. So let's take a look at the toolbox here on the screen. These are just some of the native controls available to Android developers. And because we use native controls, our UI has a fully native look and feel. And we get to take advantage of what makes that platform great. Xamarin provides a UI designer tool to make it easier to build a UI. It's available in both Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac. Using the designer is generally faster than writing it in XML manually. So instead of hand coding the XML, you drag and drop views from the toolbox onto the design surface. And then instead of setting attributes in XML, you set them in a property editor. You can switch to the source view and edit the XML at any time if you choose to. So let's work a little bit with the designer. I've got another app to open that will help us out with this a little more. This is where we left off. Okay, this is the design that we left off with. And we're going to make it a little bit better by adding some um, forecast features here in the middle. Our view model has uh, hourly forecast. And it might be kind of nice to see where things are going, not just where they are now. So I'm going to set up a situation where I've got four boxes, one for each of the next hourly chunks. I'll have the hour on it. We'll have a little weather icon so you can quickly see where it's going. And we'll have the temperature and the condition as well. So in order to set this up in Android, I need my toolbox. I'll pin that here. And I'm also going to use the document outline. That's going to become very handy when we work with the designer. So I'll pin that one as well. We'll put that right underneath. The first thing that I want you to, uh, to, to notice is if I open the document outline, everything is in the hierarchy that I have here. I have a linear layout down here that I called linear layout hidden. That's this linear layout here this section. This is hidden until we get weather information. Then we show it. We just saw that a moment ago. It just showed up. It's inside of this that I want to put that forecast information. Okay, right now inside of it is my temp text and my weather text. So above the temp text I want to set up that little bit more stuff. Now, I want to start out with a horizontal linear layout so that things are laid out horizontally. Each of my little boxes with my forecast is going to be next to each other. I also want inside of the boxes, I want some things to be stacked up vertically. So each box is going to be its own vertical linear layout. So let's start with finding it. As you can see, our toolbox is kind of full of stuff. So if I hit the search and I just say linear, there it is. I've got a linear horizontal layout. Now I could drag it on here and just try to put it in the right 
spot it's not letting me drop it's a little hard sometimes what I can do is come over here I want it right above the temp text my mouse is being finicky there we go Oops. and drop it off right there so I can use this document outline for a lot of different things especially when my UI starts to get a little bit more complicated so I have this linear layout And inside of it, I want to put some vertical linear layouts. Well, it's highlighted right here. Let's get a vertical linear layout and let's drag it right inside of this horizontal linear layout. Okay, you'll notice that it's inside of my horizontal linear layout. It got there in the uh, document outline here. We know that it's inside of it. Which is what we wanted. And inside of the vertical, I want a text view for the time. So I'll drag that inside of the vertical. I'm going to want an image view under that for the little icon, the weather icon. If I can get it right under the text there. And I'll need another text view for the temperature and the condition. So we'll put that right under the... So those are lined up really nicely. Let's start filling in some stuff just so that we can get the, um, we don't have the defaults in there and we can kind of see how things are going to look. So in the first text, if I highlight that and I go over to my properties, I'm going to look for its text property, which is a little bit farther up. I don't want it to say text. I think in my designer, I'll have it say 11 o'clock just so that I've got something else in there. Okay, I'm going to set an image in my image view just to, once again, so I've got something in there. And I've got it and in my drawables. I've got something just called icon. It's just a little Android icon. We'll just put that there for just to take up some space for us. And then the text at the bottom. I wanted to say, let's see, um, rain and 65. Nice, nice rain. Okay, but that's not lined up so good. So let's center that a little bit. There's something called gravity that'll help me to center this, to find it, there it is. And I'm going to center it horizontally. That'll help. I'll do the same thing with this one. Once again, gravity I just had it, there we go, and center that. That'll help. And the image view, I'm going to give it a size. I want it to be a specific height. So I'm going to set its height. Right now it's wrap content, so it's as big as the, the icon that's in there. But the little icons that I'm going to get are quite a bit smaller, and I'd like the box to stay a little bigger. So I'm just actually going to set this one um, to a, an actual number, 75. Okay, and so it'll stay about that size and the little icon will fill it up in the center. Okay, well that's okay. If I click away and I can see it, that's fine, but it's just sort of floating there. I'd like to have a nice little sort of box around it with some background. So I need to get a hold of that vertical linear layout. I'm going to set its background. And it's a little hard to click on and get it and find it, right? Here's the horizontal linear layout. I can't find that vertical one very easily. But I know that this is it right here. So if I highlight it over here in the document outline, I get it here. And I can set its background. That's under style. Find a style. And we'll set its background. Now, I've already kind of figured out a background color and all for this, so I'm just going to type this one in.
and that gives us kind of a partially transparent gray background. Hey, I also, I'm going to be putting these, you know, one next to another across. And I want to put a little bit of space between them. So I'm going to set a margin while I'm here. So I'm going to go back to the layout where it says layout margin. There we go, layout. All right, layout margin right. And I'm just going to set that to two, just so that there's a little bit of space between them. And then I can copy this and move it over, or I can do the same thing again, you know, over and over and over the, the, the four times. But like I said, in the interest of time, it's a lot like a cooking show where they magically bring the next thing out of the oven. I have it here already done. So we'll open the designer here. And I've got that little bit of margin between the two, and I've got them spread out across that horizontal linear layout. That looks a lot better. Now, we want to wire all this stuff up. So in our main activity, way up here in my on create where we start, remember this is where we set content view, and we went and got our, our weather button. Well, I want to go get all the other ones as well so that I have references to them so I can put the data in them. So I did all my find view by IDs and I went off and found them. Now we gave them IDs. Of course, I didn't do that earlier, but in this particular one, I went in and gave them IDs. In fact, let's uh, move that out of the way. There we go. And then in our on get weather, we got our weather view model, we started our animation, we're going to get the weather, and if the weather is available, I want to set the forecast as well as the two we already did. Okay, so I'm setting the images and the two texts from my uh, weather view model. Okay, each one of these from my weather view model. Then I'll set the temperature and the condition, which we already did, shut off that animation, and change that background to be something, you know, suitable to what the weather is at the moment. Okay, so let's run that, see if it looks any better. Okay, we'll get a city. Let's do Phoenix this time. And get weather. And there we go. In Phoenix at this moment, uh, we've got a nice little block here on the, te the times, the temperatures, we've got our little icons, we have the ones we set up before with temperature and clear skies. All right. Now we have run it in emulators. Let's, let's run it in a physical device. In order to run this in a physical device, you have to be a developer, right, on that device. We have to be able to debug on that device. And the way that you do that, and I'll just show you on the emulator, and then I'll hook up my physical device and we'll run it. The way that you do that is go into settings on your device and go all the way down to about phone. And then down at the bottom of about phone is a build number. And you just start clicking on the build number. Okay, four steps away from being a developer. Three, two, one. You are now a developer. That was easy. 
Okay, now that we do that, I can debug through USB to my physical device. So let me just get my physical device up and running. I've got a tool to put it onto my screen, but give me just a second to do that. Okay, we should have it now where I can go find it. There's my HTC device and it's connecting. Oops. There it is connecting. So I'm connected. And there is my HTC device. And here it is up here in my drop down of, of uh, devices I can run. So I'm going to go ahead and run it on the device now. And it's hooked up USB. So we'll give it a moment. And now we're in debugging, so we should have it show up here just any second. There's our winner app. We'll enter Phoenix again. We'll say get weather. keyboard down and there it is on a physical device all right so we've worked with the designer a little bit we've run it on emulators we've seen how to run it on a physical device which we should always do because things run differently on a physical device as you probably noticed So you're going to want to get started with Xamarin. Xamarin is completely free. It's available on Xamarin.com. And you can take free self-guided courses at Xamarin University that cover the core Xamarin concepts and they count towards certification. You register for those at university.xamarin.com self-guided. And when you're ready to get a full subscription for the live classes and the advanced topics, uh, and also to complete your certification, you can sign up at xamarin.com slash university. I thank you so much for attending Xamarin University's presentation of building your first Xamarin Android app. I'm Judy McNeil, and you can find me on Twitter at FlyingGeekette. Our Xamarin experts are still taking questions in the chat window, and the code that you saw today is available at AKAMS RAS619. Thanks again.